so good morning student today i will discuss one of the important aspects of surface chemistry that is called gibbs adsorption isotherm sometimes it can be explained as gibbs adsorption isotherm also now we all know that surfactant accumulates at the surface and basically if you dissolve the surfactant in water due to the adsorption of the surfactant at this surface the surface tension is decreased so therefore we must know the relationship between the extent of the adsorption and the concentration of the surfactant and that is actually basically known as gibbs adsorption equation or sometimes it is known as the gibbs adsorption isotherm now before i do the derivation i would like to tell you that there are large number of research papers are available on the study of this gibbs adsorption isotherm and it is necessary to know that why we study the gibbs adsorption isotherm and uh, what is the application of the gibbs adsorption isotherm so basically i have referred large number of research papers as well as the some books but you know that this is one of the very important papers that is related to the applicability of the gibbs adsorption isotherm and their application and they have taken large number of ionic and non ionic surfactant i have also referred two books of course it is monographs adsorption and the gibbs surface excess written by a very great scientist surface chemist of jadavpur university professor dipti kumar chattoraj and for i will tell the student that for simple derivation of the gibbs adsorption isotherm you can refer the books of atkins physical chemistry also you can refer the books of physical chemistry by ira and levine because this is derivation is not very difficult now you see that i have also referred one of the most useful article related to this derivation of the gibbs adsorption equation written by another very well known physical chemistry that is robert alberti and this is on the derivation of the gibbs adsorption isotherm so if you want to learn more about the gibbs adsorption isotherm or gibbs adsorption equation you can refer these research papers now as i told you that there are large number of surfactants and large number of scientists are synthesizing novel surfactant it may be cationic surfactant anionic surfactants as well as the non ionic surfactants and most of these surfactants have been used in industrial field and medicinal field so it is necessary to know the understanding between the structure of the surfactants and their behavior in the air water interface or you can call it it is a the extent of the adsorption at constant temperature and pressure with respect to the number of moles of that surfactant this is basically gibbs adsorption isotherm and uh, j willard gibbs he actually 
derive this relationship or you can call this a quantitative relationship because with the help of these gives adsorption isotherm one can determine one of the most important properties that is called surface excess concentration so j elad gives actually derive this equation and the simple definition of this is the relationship between the extent of the adsorption of a solute and the change in the surface tension of a liquid due to its addition or adsorption behavior now as i told you that there are large number of research papers available but i am also referred this research paper written by this belton group and according to these group that is a two dimensional equation and uh, it is of course related to the gibbs duhem equation you can call it and it is a correlation between the surface tension and the activity of that solute particular so the gibbs adsorption equation is a two dimensional analogs of the gibbs duhem equation which relates the number of moles as well as the chemical potential now this is the actually final of course i will derive these things this is the final equation of gibbs adsorption equation or sometimes it is called the gibbs adsorption isotherm and this terminology is very important that is actually surface excess concentration and this is change in surface tension gamma is this is capital gamma it is surface excess concentration and this is the concentration or activity of the surfactant or the solute that means if i take you know that suppose there are two phases one is alpha phase and another is beta phase so it is quite natural that there must be interface so maybe suppose this is the interface and in one like or in two so it is maybe liquid phase it is maybe vapor phase so what would be the actual population or concentration of that surfactant because you know that at particular surface molecules experience a tension but if i talk about the bulk phase it is bulk phase so according to this gibbs adsorption equation the surface excess concentration is nothing but it is actually capital gamma is equal to number of moles of the solute at particular it is not this phase and if it is surface area if i can call it say s can also like that this surface area so that is actually surface excess concentration and whenever we calculate this change so there may be change in free energy suppose this is total free energy work done like that so that that free energy may be equal to free energy of the alpha stage plus free energy of another phase then of course free energy of 
like that similarly number of moles i can write that n1 alpha n2 beta like that n i like that so with the help of the simple gibbs dual equation we can derive this gibbs adsorption isotherm and on the basis of this values of the surface excess concentration sometimes it may be positive sometimes it may be negative so we can predict the extent of the adsorption and regarding this change in surface tension with respect to concentration of that surfactant concentration if we plot a graph between the surfactant surface tension and concentration from that slope value we can also calculate this change in surface tension with respect to logarithm of the concentration and ultimately we can determine this uh, natural log log t so then even we can also calculate the unit also we you know the unit of this uh, surface tension you know the unit of this r you know the unit of the concentration so we can also calculate the the unit of this surface excess concentration and this is the very important concept that we can also calculate the unit of that surface excess concentration like that i think so again i am just telling you that it is a it is a thermodynamic thermodynamic relationship and the change in concentration of the component here also i am taking the surfactant but any component we can take n1 or n2 type two component system but always bear in mind this is not a curved surface so it is not a curved surface this is plane type of things so i can take a solute as well as the solvent like as things and definitely if there is a change in surface tension so naturally there is a corresponding change in the surface energy and for that we have to calculate the work done to change this surface energy and so therefore we generally use the gibbs free energy for the calculation of this thing so gibbs derived the thermodynamic relationship between the surface tension and the surface excess concentration adsorption per unit surface area so it is you can call also that it is a method of measuring the adsorption of molecules at the interface but in this particular experiment in our msc classes we do take different types of cationic and anionic surfactants and we change the concentration of that surfactant and measure the surface tension and with the help of this concentration and surface tension value the gibbs adsorption isotherm can be proved now let me derive the derivation which is very simple and uh, first we know that free energy is the function of temperature pressure number of moles of the solvent and number of moles of the suppose it is a solid surfactant and what is our objective first we will calculate the change in free energy in normal cases then we will calculate the change in free energy at the surface and suppose we are considering the surface area is s so it is up to you in some book you can also take a also surface area even in some cases you can write sigma but 
in this particular derivation i am using the s as a surface area so this is the derivation first i should write like that g is a free energy function of t p and i am taking a two component system i am taking two component system n1 and n2 like that n1 and n2 okay what does it mean is the n1 and n2 that means i am just talking about the alpha and beta like also that so it is free energy temperature so i can like that change in energy so change in free energy with respect to temperature at constant pressure and other components is also constant in one or in two like that okay then again change in free energy with respect to pressure at constant temperature in one and two i am calculating the change in free energy normal cases then i will write the change in free energy at the interface or at the surface so delta g d n1 first component temperature pressure and other component is constant then second component delta g d n2 d n2 temperature pressure and in one like that so if you know the thermodynamic gibbs helmholtz equation delta g delta d is equal to minus it is entropy s here this is s is entropy not surface energy entropy don't confuse with that surface energy surface area so s d t change in free energy with respect to pressure is volume b so v d p is thermodynamic relationship very simple and it is change in free energy with respect to number of moles it is called chemical potential partial molar free energy partial molar if you understand the partial molar power it is very, very simple so it is chemical potential mu1 dn1 plus mu2 dn2 so it is chemical you can write like that mu is the chemical potential chemical potential so at constant temperature constant pressure free energy change is equal to you can write also like that summation mu i i am just talking about the normal cases d and i like that this can be said now this is actually for normal cases but as i told you that i am talking about this interface this this interface what about that interface so you can also denote it as this this phase is important sometimes it is called the gibbs surface adsorption gibbs dividing surface gibbs dividing surface of course it is a hypothetical imagination and if i talk about that s is the surface area
and gamma is the surface tension. So this equation is modified. That is, I must write, and of course, for yes, like that. So it is gamma. Yes. So, what is what does it mean? First is the free energy for the normal cases. This is free energy, change in free energy at the at the surface. So, summation mu i d n y, surface tension and change in surface tension. So, I can write like that. So, write my first equation is delta G. Of course, it is for surface. I can I suppose there is two components. So mu one d n one plus mu two d n two plus gamma. Yes. This is my first equation. I have just elaborated this thing. So again, I, this I am talking about this for alpha part and for the beta part, just for consideration. This alpha and beta. Now. Now we know that in normal cases, if I apply the Gibbs Duhem equation, so it is also G. Again, it is a free energy is n1 m1, n2 m2. One form of the Gibbs Duhem equation. So. Complete differential. I differentiate it. First function into differential of second. Second function differential of first. Again. First function again. Second function d n. As similar, we derive one for normal cases, one for at interface or surface. So therefore. For if it is considered for surface, surface. So I have to consider this surface tension and surface area. Surface tension and surface area. So gamma surface tension. Surface area S second function. This is equation two. So just now, yeah, I will put it. So again, of course, this is for at the surface. So just you you compare these two equation, you will see that mu one d n one. So I must cancel mu two to cancel gamma cancel. Of course delta g delta g. So what we are getting n one. D mu 
वन एन टू डी म्यू टू प्लस एस टी इज इक्वल टू जीरो दिस इज आवर फाइनल इक्वेशन सो यू कैन कॉल इट इज ए थ्री इक्वेशन now from that equation now we have to derive the final gibbs adsorption equation or gibbs adsorption isotherm now there are two possibilities either the equation at the interface or the surface and suppose i am talking about the bulk phase surfactant dissolve in solvent so naturally in, if i talk about the bulk phase and at surface the surfactant experiences some tension but in bulk phase if i consider the bulk phase so let me first again i am writing here n1 d m1 plus n2 d m2 plus s t is equal to 0 equation number 3 so now i am talking about the bulk phase and in order to differentiate between surface stage and the bulk phase i am just using n1 zero like that number of moles of that solvent is n1 first component and n2 zero this represents the bulk phase bulk phase so what i can write here n1 0 d mu 1 plus n2 0 bulk phase d mu 2 is equal to 0 so what i can do what i can do like that i can write like that n1 0 t mu 1 is equal to minus n2 0 d mu 2 or d mu 1 change in chemical potential is equal to minus n2 0 divided by n1 0 concentration in the bulk phase d mu 2 so now i am getting two formula this is equation number 3 and this is equation number 4 where for bulk phase the d this is the concentration at the bulk phase concentration of that component 1 in the bulk phase so if i substitute the value of d me 1 from equation 4 to equation 3 so what i'll get n1 no problem in place of d me 2 right like that minus n2 0 bulk phase concentration ratio n10 bulk phase 
isn't it d mu 2 so just i am substituting this value so n1 into d mu 2 plus n2 d mu 2 i can write like that minus s of change in surface tension you follow my point in place of d mu 2 i have written here this thing like that again So, if I write like that, d mu 2 is common, d mu 2 is common, so n2, n2 minus n1 n2 n1 0 is equal to minus s d gamma. So now see it very carefully that this is the difference between some concentration that means if I consider n2 is the number of solute present in the solution and this is also number of solvent number of moles of the solvent and this is the bulk phase so it is a one type of difference it is not like the population of that surfactant at the surface but this is a difference between these things and you can call it is also this difference is also called at the surface excess but surface excess per unit surface area that is actually surface excess concentration. So the final equation if I just or want to write the final equation I can remove all these things. So final equation I can write that. this if I write d mu 2 that is this is so I can write like that n2 minus n1 n2 0 bulk phase n1 0 divided by s it is also surface excess the, the concentration difference with respect to so, so excess surface excess with respect to surface area is equal to minus change in surface tension with respect to chemical potential on the concentration and this left hand side part is called as capital gamma or surface excess concentration surface excess concentration if I am talking about the two, you can take that surface interface minus d mu two. So similarly, we can also calculate for one also for alpha for beta is equal to minus d. D mu 1. Now, 
this is actually you can call it is a surface excess surface excess so define surface action change in surface tension with respect to chemical potential but generally we are using molar concentration sometimes the solution is very dilute sometimes solution is very concentrate so therefore i have to slightly rearrange this equation using the very simple concept you all know that it's a very common equation mu is equal to mu 0 rt natural log of activity rt activity this is activity so for because i am talking about the solid part so i can write like that mu 2 is equal to mu mu 0 2 plus rt natural log of a2 for the solid part so it is a difference here if i because i have to substitute the value of the d mu 2 so d mu 2 derivatives it is a constant ideal conditions it is zero so it is rt d natural log of activity you can write your activity divided by c use equation number fifth so substitute the value of t mu 2 in our main equation so that is again gamma capital gamma into right i am just talking about the surface minus you know 1 by rt this rt d gamma d natural log of activity so now just if i just you i just you see here this one minus rt change in surface tension and d natural log of c or concentration like that so again i am coming to this point one by now you you know that we know that we can write like that d natural log activity it is like that and we also know that stoichiometric concentration into activity coefficient is equal to activity if the solution is very very dilute surfactant because the cmc you know is very low so then of course activity coefficient is equal to also one or of course if it is a concentrated solution because you have to change the concentration of the surfactant then of course you have to consider the activity otherwise if the surfactant concentration is low so we can use that c also so there are many forms also it is equal to minus 1 by rt then in place of 
like that you see here log the activity of 1 by a2 so a2 d gamma d a2 for dilute solution this can be replaced we can write C concentration we can write DC like that so that also comes or we change these things so you can write you can write minus minus 1 by RT Point three zero three D gamma D log of C like that. So if we plot a graph, now you can also calculate the the unit also because if I take it as a moles mole dm cube, you also mole dm cube this is newton per meter r you know joule per degree per mole t is the absolute temperature so this k this k and joule one joule 1 joule is equal to newton meter so this we can also calculate this newton newton cancel so mole meter square this is also you can also calculate the concentration now the application of these things how do you apply this equation so if I plot a graph between the change in surface tension with respect to concentration whatever you are getting change in like that or sometimes you can increase these things so there are two types of the possibility one possibility is that the value of surface excess may be positive when do I get the positive value when this value of this slope change in surface tension with respect to concentration of the surfactant the slope value will be negative slope value will be negative so the surface excess concentration value will be positive that indicates that is the adsorption that means if we increase the concentration of the surfactant the surface tension of water is continuously decreased on contrary if you get the negative value of surface excess concentration then of course the slope value will be positive so that indicates that if you increase the concentration of the surfactant then of course surface tension will be increased so this is the application of that surface excess concentration or you can call it a Gibbs adsorption isotherm that means with the help of the magnitude of this surface excess concentration one can predict the nature of the adsorption so finally
finally i can tell you that i can tell you that surface excess is not the population of the surfactant at the surface as i told you it is not like that and is, there are two types of things actually one is in real system it is real and as is model this is interface alpha and beta and in model this is actually gives dividing surface one is model system proposed by the gives at option so it is not the population of the surfactant at the surface but it is the difference between the number of moles of the surfactant molecules at the surface minus the number of moles of the surfactant in bulk phase as i told you that time n2 minus n1 i think n2 zero divided by n1 zero like that this is actually the bulk phase so that is actually the actual uh, definition of the surface excess and i have already discussed with you that when the surface excess component is positive then of course the if we increase the concentration of the surfactant the surface tension is always decreasing and when the surface excess component is negative opposite case if we increase the surfactant concentration so it will also surfactant is also increase so gives absorption isotherm finally you can tell it it gives the exact quantitative relation for the strains and don't it is not it is a general principle here we are using the surfactant but in practical time you can use any type of solute and solvent so it is a one type of it is called the thermodynamic relationship so you know that this is the final formula surface excess concentration percent surface minus 1 by rt change in surface tension with respect to natural hope c so by that method we can calculate the unit also which is very important newton per meter i think thank you very much